Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today we're going to take a look at more CBs from Redivis. This is the MB1, which honestly, except for the fact that it's missing sideband, has an amazing amount of features for a tiny little package. This is going to be number four and number five, and I'm going to test them both out together. In the last video, we did a frequency expansion, which is legal to go from CB to ham, but not from ham to CB. So it was a lot of fun to do that and, and, and play a, inside of the legal system. This time, I think I found a different way to get this done with the help of my friend Ziggy. So I'm going to test it out and see if that's actually possible. Let's get over to the bench and get these things figured out. Well, we got no packing material. That'll be an easy enough fix when we get these things shipped out. Let's see. We have microphone one, microphone two. That's all good. We've got radio one with cigarette lighter plug, radio two with cigarette lighter plug. We have one bag of accessories. We have one owner's manual. We have one return label. No name, but it came from Pennsylvania. So if you are from Pennsylvania and you didn't like this radio, let me know why. I think I have enough spare parts to make this, to get another one of these kits in there, but I'm not sure. I definitely have a spare owner's manual because I'm keeping one of these radios because they're a lot of fun. You see, if these things had sideband, we could take the Toad's digital interface board and get these things onto FT8. A little bit of a scratch there. We've got the screen protector on that one. We've got the screen protector on that one. Let's get it powered up. Radio power meter with a dummy load attached to it and a power station here. Let's get the power station on. All right, that's working. And then we'll take a look at the radio, see if it's, well, it's got an on off switch. Turn on DC out, turn on radio. All right, excellent. And I, you know me, I don't like the red. That's the factory default. I like the cyan. There we go. All the colors are good in person, but the cyan shows up really good on video. And honestly, I like the idea that you can make this thing match up with the color of whatever the interior of your car is or the interior theme of your shack. So in my shack, this thing's going to be green. In my car, it's going to be white. Right, we are on channel 31 in AM mode. And I'm on the wrong side of the meter. There we go. This is a this is a dual band. It'll do HF and it'll do VHF, UHF. And so I was on the wrong side. So let's see. Let's try that again. Why are we not getting any transmit power out? Oh, we might have something here. Let's go down to channel six. Interesting. All right, let's do a factory reset because we have no power out. Always do the easy stuff first. We are resetting, changes the color back, puts us into FM mode, get that back to the right color out of the function menu. We'll test FM power now. Oh, no power out. Nice. Let's do AM. No power out. That's channel nine. Maybe there's a restriction. Not that the police monitor channel nine anymore, do they? No power out on Super Bowl six. No power out on FM. It is pulling power out of the power station though. Check that out. So that's seven watts trying to power. Okay, I'm gonna change radios and see if it is the power meter that's at fault or if it is the radio that's at fault. The power station is definitely providing power. The radio's on and it draws more power. Radio one, radio two. And it draws more power when the key goes down. Plug that in. Oh, we're already powered on. Nice. Let's get that color changed. Get out of there. And that's channel 31. AM mode, yep, seven watts, nothing on the dummy load, nothing on the meter, nothing on the dummy load. I wonder why that's doing that. All right, let's switch it over to FM mode. Nothing, nothing. Interesting. Testing, testing, one, two. Nope, nothing. All right, since both of these are not working, I'm going to rule that it's probably more a meter problem than a radio problem, and I'm going to dig in a little bit and try and figure out what's going on there. That's weird. All right, you're not going to believe this. It's usually something simple. Keep it stupid simple. Keep it simple stupid. Keep it simple, stupid. I unplugged the coax and replugged the coax in, which I did when I switched radios, and now it's working all of a sudden. Let's take a look. Same setup. This is radio number two up here, and the same power meter. All I did was reattach the coax. This is FM channel nine, and we're putting out 3.11 watts. AM channel nine, three watts. So power's a little lower than it should be, but I don't know what that's about. There we go. No power again. 0.8. I think it's a meter problem. 0.8. Let's change radios one more time. Oh, 
We're going to switch it up. There we go. 0 0.8. Yeah, that's got to be a meter problem. 0 0.08. Hmm. 1 to 1 SWR, no reflected power. There's something going on there. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Strange. We have taken the radio out of this scenario here because we're having trouble with that meter. You guys have just seen that, so you already know it. And I moved it over to this scenario here. This is the radio, and this is a dummy load and power meter that I have built. It's got a bunch of internal resistors in here and an internal external switch for it. So I can switch to the external dummy load. This is the same. This is the same dummy load that I was using on this power meter over here. And so we're gonna test it again, but I gotta go into dark mode. Maybe, well, I don't have enough hands. Yeah, I gotta go into dark mode because the, the screen isn't bright enough to really see what's going on there. So, mood lighting, there we go, look at that. Get it in some shadow. I'm going to take the microphone and key down. We're in complete washout mode on the, there we go. We're in complete washout mode on the camera. Anyway, we're still on channel six. Let's see what we got. And FM AM mode, channel six AM mode. Five point, oh, power's all over the place. 5.9, about, about five or six watts. This is not a peak averaging meter. Overload, nine watts. Excellent. On AM, and it might not even be designed for AM, but we are seeing power out, which was the important part. Let's switch this over to... FM again? Well, let's switch it to the external dummy load. There we go. All right, AM. Almost six watts on AM. Perfect. So this radio is transmitting and it is receiving signals. You heard the squelch open up, so it's doing pretty good. All right, all the way down to level one. That's as low as it gets. It's still pretty bright on camera, but that's because we've got the whole room in dark mode. Go down to channel six. And then we'll take a look at our power meter. This is FM, 5.7, 5.68, 5 5.74, doing pretty good. Let's switch this over to AM mode. 5.7, 5.8, nice. What's that swing? Oh, I saw, I saw seven and a quarter, seven, seven point four four. Hello, yep, we're, we're peaking the meter, we're peaking. Overload! Awesome. Let me get some light back on in here. Ooh, bright. I don't know what the meter is rated at. I'm gonna assume it cuts out at nine and a half, 10 watts range. And this is a four watt radio and we're doing good. What I wanted to see was, are we getting power out? Yes, we're getting power out. So win number one. Next up, we gotta figure out transmit. I wanna hear them talk to each other. Radio A into a dummy load directly. Radio B into a dummy load directly. Let's talk to ourselves. Channel six AM, channel six AM. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, 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 one, two, three. These dummy loads must be really good because I can't hear myself. Squelch is set to eight. Squelch is off. Hear a little bit of background noise. Squelch is set to eight. Squelch is off. Got both green lights on. Got the green light on there showing that it's receiving static, receiving noise. I got the green light on there showing that it's receiving noise. Testing, 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 test. Yep, testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three. That radio over there works. Testing, 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 one, two, three, testing, one, two, three. That radio over there works, excellent. So now it's time to tear these things down and do the mod testing. All right, I do have another video where I go over this complete mod, but this is going to be a different way of doing the same thing because there's always more than one way to do something. And I don't just mean the right way and the wrong way. I mean, sometimes there actually legitimately is more than one way to do something. This is my favorite screwdriver kit for doing benchtop work. I'll leave a link for this one in the description down below for you. Mostly because it has all the bits that I need. This, these are Torx bits, but the... These are Torx screws, but the bit is actually a security Torx. It's got that hole in the center. Be careful when you're pulling the lid off because the speaker is attached and you don't want to yank it on away. And the idea is that there are two pads here and two diagonal lines there. Let me get you zoomed in. There we go. And let's point to them a little bit better. So you see this diagonal line here with the white stripe. That will do your frequency expansion. And I am 
completely unplugged, so it doesn't matter if I touch stuff in here. And then this other horizontal line with the white stripe in between will do your region setting, so EU versus Germany versus US, etc., etc. And then these two pads here are the same as these two lines. So I'm going to test that out with my multimeter. And what we do is we get this thing into continuity mode, and she beeps when you touch them together, which means that the circuit is complete. And so what we're going to do is test to see if these points touch up with each other. So this, this point here and this point here should not have any continuity at all. All right, they are open, which they're supposed to be because they're not joined. And then one of these should connect over here. No, no. Oh, there we go. So that's the same point there. And then is this the same point as this one? It is. And then these two should be a mirror of those two, so they should be wide open. And they are wide open indeed. This one here should be wide open. It is. And then it should connect up to there. Oh, they're upside down. There we go. And then that means that that one connects to the lower one. Perfect. Okay, so we've proven that it works this way. We've proven that the radio works in its in its natural form. I'm gonna go ahead and mod this one out as well and see what we can do. So I need my solder kit, and this has the pine sill in it that I love so much. It's a little USB-C powered soldering iron, and it honestly, it just gets the job done, and that's, that's what I want. And for those of you that don't know, USB-C puts out different voltages and different amperages depending on the power supply that you have. So check this out. I'm going to turn it on and it's going to heat up. And if you have a wimpy USB-C power supply, then there we go. We're up to temperature. Then you have no ability to get this thing done. But fear not, because this thing also has a DC barrel jack on the end of it. And I have used this to build quite a few projects and it retains its heat pretty well. We lost 130 degrees unplugging it and showing you the, the rear end of it. And then let's turn it back on. And there we go. So that is ready to go. I need my solder. Where's my solder? There it is. A messy workbench drives me insane. Okay, so we've got the solder. And what I'm going to do is get my, I need a better set of solder eyeballs. I'm going to get my solder eyeballs on, and we're going to see if we can just bridge the left side over there. And I should be able just to make a blob between the two of them. But the solder mask sometimes gets in the way. Oh, there we go. That was just, I wasn't even looking when that happened. So do I tempt fate and try and clean that up or do we just use it as is? We're going to try and see if we can use it as is. And now the ultimate proof is these over here should now be connected. And it helps if the meter is on. These over here should now be connected. Oh, and they are connected. And these should not be because that solder blob is tight enough to get the job done. Man, that is such an easier version than all the mess I went through last time. Perfect. Excellent. Time for us to turn this thing on together. So we've got the same setup. We've got the Dabson power station powering the radio from the cigarette lighter socket. We've got the radio opened up here on the bench with that same solder blob in there. And then we're going to use this meter. It's going to overpower the meter. I already know that. So we've turned it on. We've got, we've got some screen stuff going on there. Let me get the lights properly dimmed for us. Let's turn the radio on and see if we exploded it. It's upside down, so it says TS, which means it's open, and then there is, it, it does a reset when you do that. So I need to change that color back. Oh, this is going to be so hard upside down. Yeah, I totally missed it because it's upside down. I thought that said RF. It says R-A-R-E. -R -E. All right, cyan. Perfect. And it's in super bright mode anyway. Y'all can't see it anyhow. Let's go to, there's a power setting in here. Nice repeaters. Off, offset of positive, offset of negative. I can't even read that. RF auto, RF gain, 
Roger beep color. I'm going the wrong direction. RF power. That's what I want. Low, middle, and high. Channel six. Uh, well, I guess technically. I need to switch the band to band L to be legal. I'm in a dummy load anyway. There we go. 24 megahertz. Channel nine. Let's take a look at our power meter. Oh, I need a microphone. I'm so needy. All right, let's take a look at our power meter. It should go, where's my shadow? It should go straight into overload mode. Overload, yep. All right, excellent. Let's get some lights back on here. So, it works. That is a much easier mod than the last one that I did. We got two of these radios tested out. I am currently putting this thing back together. I'm gonna take my soldering iron and let that cool down. Both of them are working. And since this mod is easy enough, if you want a modded one, let me know. I will leave a link in the description down below where you can find one of these and make it your own. And uh, if you want it unmodded so you can mod it yourself, I've got one that's unmodded also. And uh, these are for sale. And from time to time I get stuff in for repair and I get stuff that I am no longer interested in and need to move on for whatever reason. And uh, I've got a for sale list. So let me know what you want and I will get it all squared away for you and we'll get it all shipped out to you and you can have fun in this hobby just like I am. So it is legal to modify any radio when you have a ham radio license. If you have a dummy load, it's legal to test out that these radios work on the dummy load. If you have the ham radio license, you can take a non-ham radio and make it into a ham radio. And then once it makes the trip to ham, you can't make it back to CB. So even though this one here will still work as a CB radio, if you key the mic and start talking, you technically can't do that. It's against the rules. I'll also leave a link for the uh, power meter in the description as well, because it's a it's a fun kit to build and, and teaches you a little bit about what goes on in radio space and radio things. But otherwise, that's the end of the MB1 saga for now. We'll keep on keeping on and keep on repairing more radios. So if you enjoy watching somebody repair radios and make them do things that they're not supposed to do, then this is definitely the channel for you. Right below the video, there is a subscribe button. Click it, makes me happy, makes that subscriber number go up, tells the world you like radio stuff and they should like radio stuff too. There will be links in the description for the soldering iron and the, the meter and all that other jazz, including the radio as well. And if you don't like radio stuff and you've made it this far in the video, then here's another video that I think you'll like to watch right after this one that's even more radio stuff. Perhaps even another CB repair. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.